Hi guys, uh, it's Mr. Holding here and this video is just covering the difference between autosomes and sex chromosomes and we're looking at what is an autosome, what's a sex chromosome and are the difference between homologous and non-homologous pairs. So what's the difference? First of all, autosomes are the first, in humans, the first 22 pairs of chromosomes. So if you look over here, um, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to number 22. And they're, they're, if you look at them closely, they're matching. They're matching in terms of size. They're matching where the centromeres are. And even though you can't see them in this picture, if you could see the banding, you would see that they're matching there as well. So we refer to them as the autosomes. The sex chromosomes are, are the 23rd in humans, are the 23rd pair, and they de and they determine the gender. So, so if you've got, in this case, um, an X and a Y, this is going to be a male. If it's an X and an X, it determines females. All right, now the next term we look at is what's called homologous or non-homologous. Now, homologous um, is a term given to the members of two matching pairs of chromosomes. So if we look back here, we would say that these is a homologous pair because they're the same size, same shape, the same banding. They are a matching pair, all right? Whereas this one here and this one over here, that would be non-homologous because they're different. Okay, so that's where that term comes from. Um, Non-homologous, obviously, the term that are not matching. Okay, and the example we've given down here is two number 21 chromosomes are said to be homologous, whereas the 21 and number 11, um, they're not. They're non-homologous. All right, we have two different types of traits when we talk about them. So each um, chromosome, um, or each pair of chromosome, has two sets of instructions for the same thing. So... Um, you might look at number two, and this is just an example, it's not actually correct, but they might be co have a gene coding for hair colour, and one might say dark, and one might say light. Now, depending on the particular trait, whether it's a dominant and recessive, dark is generally more dominant than recessive, you may end up, even though you've got coding for light hair on one of them, you may end up with dark hair overall, okay? Um, or it might be a mixture or something like that, and that's how they work. Okay, if we look here, we've got two chromosomes here that are co they're, they're homologous, so they're coding for the same thing. And there's this egg example, they're coding for purple and for white, all right? And depending on how those two alleles or the genes interact with each other will determine whether it's going to be a purple flower or a white flower, or it might match together to be, um, you know, a pinky purple or something like that, depending on uh, what it goes. But basically the concept is that you've got two two um, a homologous pair which is two chromosomes the gene on each that codes for the color of the flowers and then the outcome of what the the offspring is going to be is determined on how those two interact okay this goes for it um, explains a similar thing um, just a bit differently so you've got um, two homologous pairs here um, don't know which number they are or what particular organism but you can see the genes are matching but they're different colors that generally means that the trait is going to be different. It might be height, height, for example. This one might be coding for someone who's going to be six foot ten. This one is going to be six foot six, and obviously they're going to work out um, depending on you know a number of different factors. Same thing for down the bottom here. Um, this might be eye color. This one might be coding for green. This one might be coding for blue. Green is more dominant, so therefore the baby has um, green eyes and so on. All right. Okay, so just in um, summary, basically your autosomes are your, those pairs of chromosomes that code for a number of different traits, but not gender. Okay, so in humans at the first 22, they might code for a, a number of things, but they don't code for gender. Your sex chromosomes are that final pair of chromosomes that, co that do code for gender or the sex of the offspring. So in humans, that's the 23rd. All right, and these two terms as well are important because homologous refers to a matching pair. Okay, whereas non-homologous refers to two separate chromosomes that aren't actually a match. Okay, so that's the difference between autosomes and sex chromosomes.